Hi guys, so in this video we'll be discussing indirect taxes. We'll first of all discuss their meaning, moving on to specific and ad valorem taxes, and then moving on to its diagram, which is, well, kind of the difficult part. Okay, starting off with its meaning, well, indirect taxes are named such because they aren't paid directly by the people who are, like for example, indirect taxes, people directly pay the money to the government. In indirect taxes, however, these taxes are collected by someone else. Let's say if you go to a restaurant or something, right? And if you pay the bill over there, then you're paying the tax to the people over there. You're paying the 13% GST, for example, in Pakistan, you're paying that tax to the restaurant. And then the restaurant pays that tax to the government. So you are indirectly paying the tax to the government. And so this is why it's known as, well, an indirect tax. So this is the meaning of indirect tax or indirect taxes moving on to well specific and ad valorem taxes right so we have specific taxes specific indirect taxes and ad valorem indirect taxes so let's say uh, when we talk about specific indirect taxes what happens is we have a specific amount of tax let's say 500 rupees on each and every price so well this is the curve this is the price this is the quantity, this is the supply curve. And we have a tax of 500 rupees on each and every price. So the supply curve will shift inwards at each and every price point by 500 rupees. Since well, whenever there is an indirect tax, the supply curve shifts inwards. And so in this case, the value of the indirect tax remains the same on each and every price level. And so it's gonna shift inwards like this. Moving on to well, add valorum. So for ad volume, what happens is, let's say this is the supply curve, this is a normal diagram, price, and then quantity on the x-axis. This is a supply curve, right? And this is the supply plus tax curve. It's kind of unusual compared to, well, the initial diagram. In the initial diagram, it just shifted parallel to the original curve. In this case, it's going a bit, like it's moving or it's sloping upwards a bit in this case. So this is because in this case, we aren't really, well, uh, using a specific value, rather we're using a percentage. Let's say if we were to, well, apply a tax of 5%. And so when the prices are lower, when the price is lower, the 5% is also lower. Let's say the 5% of, let's take some value, 5% of, well, uh, 10. 0 0.05 it's going to become something else it's going to be a lower value it's going to be it's going to give us a lower value as compared to 0 0.05 which is five percent right it's the same as five percent of 100 right so this is going to give us a larger value as compared to the lower value and so as the price increases, as you can see, as the price increases, the curve shifts by more and more because well now the amount of tax actually being applied increases. So this is the first part, right? We now distinguish between specific indirect taxes and ad volume indirect taxes too. Right, so the last part of this chapter includes the diagrams which in my opinion are a bit complex, but obviously they can still be learned easily. So let's have a look. This is the normal demand and supply diagram. This is the demand curve. This is the supply curve. Now let's say if the government places a tax of $5 per unit. So the thing to really realize is that an indirect tax, indirect taxes always affect the producers. And so even in this case, this indirect tax will shift the supply curve as compared to the demand curve, right? So the demand curve will remain the same, whereas the supply curve will shift. Because well, when the government applies an indirect tax, what it does is it disincentivizes the producers. And so because of that, the producers cut back on their supply. So let's have a look at this. So the supply curve will shift inwards. 
something like this right um so this is our new supply curve let's just label out the equilibrium price and quantity so this is the old equilibrium price uh, sorry equilibrium quantity this is q1 and this is the old equilibrium price p1 right and when the supply curve shifts inwards this is the shift we now have a new equilibrium price p2 so the price has increased right and we have a new equilibrium quantity q2 so this is the whole sort of diagram right now so the thing is well whenever the supply curve shifts inwards um it happens due to i mean in this case it happened due to an indirect tax but the producers are not the only ones paying the tax because it depends on the elasticity of demand of the demand curve so let's say if the demand is relatively inelastic so inelastic means basically if the price increases by let's say a lot the quantity will fall by less than that right or if it was elastic then if the price increased by let's say a bit then the quantity would decrease by a lot so this is the basic of elasticity right um so if the demand curve is more inelastic then the producers can pass on the price to the uh, to the consumers right because then if they pass on the price obviously the price has increased by more as compared to the fall in quantity so since price into quantity is revenue this is revenue right so even though the price increased by a lot the quantity fell by a bit depends on the value of elasticity obviously but that's what we are assuming right now and so when this happens the revenue still increases right and so let's say if in this case the demand curve was inelastic then the producers would pass more of the burden or the incidence of tax so burden of the tax burden of tax is also known as incidence of tax incidence it's just a fancy word to um for the same word for the same word burden right uh it has the same meaning so let's say if the demand curve was inelastic the producers would obviously pass on most of the more more of the tax not most of it but more of the tax to the consumers right uh so this is how it works and if it was elastic then obviously they would um absorb more of the burden themselves so in this case what happens is as the supply curve shifted inwards the price has changed as we can see right so the price has increased so this is the new price this p2 is the new price so the thing is the tax applied was by $5 right so this is the tax per unit and so on a demand and supply diagram the tax per unit is represented by the vertical distance between the two supply curves the vertical distance between the two supply curves at the new equilibrium point so this is the new equilibrium point this point right and this is the vertical distance vertical distance between the two supply curves thus so this whole box represents the tax because this is tax per unit right and since like obviously people buy a certain quantity so the quantity being bought is q2 or the quantity being traded in the market is q2 so price into quantity is the total amount of tax being paid over here right um so within this sort of box we can see like this whole box represents the indirect tax being paid in total and so it is also known as the government revenue it's also known as the government revenue from this indirect tax but the thing is the indirect tax as we just as we just discussed is just not paid by the producers or the consumers it is divided based on elasticity figures so in this case as you can see the price has increased it's not like the price has remained the same right so the price has increased from this point from this point to this point and so we will look at both of them so since has since the price has increased what happens is well this whole part is paid by the consumers due to the increase in price this whole part right and the rest of the box since well the government does 
earn this revenue must be paid by none other than our producers. So this is paid by the producers because this price, let me just uh, label this out. So this price, or this old equilibrium price, this pink line one, which is P1, is the old price, right? And P2 is the new price for the consumers because we are looking at the price for consumers. But whenever an indirect tax is applied, as we just discussed, it disincentivizes the producers. But why does it do so? Well, because the price for the producers also decreases because the producers obviously also have a price, right? Because whenever there is a good, Consumers buy the good, consumers buy the good at a certain price, let's say at $5, $10, $5, something like that, right? $10, let's say. So the consumers buy the good at a certain price and then this price is also the price which the producers get. But whenever an indirect tax is applied, the price for the producers is different from the price for the consumers. And so this is like this whole this point represents P2 because well this is the new equilibrium point right um, this is the vertical distance this is the new equilibrium price P1 but this price let's just call this P3 which is represented by this line right this turquoise line or teal line is P3 and this is the price which the producers get so initially at the new equilibrium point at this point the producers could have gotten this price, no? this P2 price. But what they end up getting is P3. And so it, it is a lower price because of which, well, the producers have to pay a burden because now, now they are not really getting the price which they were initially getting, which is because of the price difference, because the producers pay more because of the price difference. And now the producers also have to pay more because of the price difference. So this is the concept and this is the whole diagram. Uh, there is another diagram about consumer and producer surplus linking uh, to indirect taxes, which we'll look at right now. So this is the part of indirect taxes which links to consumer and producer surplus and it uh, leads to a new concept known as deadweight loss, which we'll look at uh, on the diagram right now. So this is a normal demand and supply diagram or representing the equilibrium point between the two curves, right? So let's work on this curve now. So as we know, whenever the government applies an indirect tax, the supply curve shifts inwards. And so even in this case, the same is gonna happen. Supply curve will shift inwards. This is S1, right? And we have this new equilibrium quantity. Q2 and this new equilibrium price P2, right? So let's just discuss consumer and producer surplus within this diagram right now. So consumer surplus is always the area above the price line, right? And below the demand curve. So initially the price line was P1. So this whole area, this whole triangle represented the consumer surplus, right? the area above the price line and then below the demand curve. But now, since the supply curve shifted inwards, the price has changed to P2. And so the new price line is P2, this white line, this white dotted line. And so the area above the price line and below the demand curve is this whole area, right? So when we subtract the larger triangle from the smaller triangle, what we do end up with is this trapezium. This whole trapezium. This is the loss in consumer surplus. I'm just gonna mark this, label this one. This is loss in consumer surplus. I'll just write it down as LCS, loss in consumer surplus. Right, and as you also discussed in the last diagram, what happens is whenever there's a new price, the producers also receive a new price. And so the vertical distance, this is the vertical distance between the supply curves, which represents the tax per unit, right? And then we can multiply it with quantity, but what we are looking at right now is the new price, 
so the vertical distance this is the racks per unit as we discussed and so this is p3 this is the whole i mean we'll discuss later on but p3 represents the price which the producers receive right and so at the price p1 at the price let me just change the color at the price p1 the producer surplus was the area below the price line and above the supply curve so all of this area this whole triangle but now when the price line has shifted to p3 now p3 is the new price line and so all of this is now the small triangle is the is the producer surplus right and so the loss is the trapezium this whole box plus the small triangle so this represents loss in producer surplus now as we discussed in the last diagram the vertical distance between the supply curves at the new equilibrium point into quantity basically this whole box this whole box represents the government's revenue right so this is what the government gains government's revenue so this is the government's revenue this is the loss in consumer surplus and this is the loss in producer surplus but what can really be noticed in this diagram as well the loss in consumer surplus and the loss in producer surplus is overflowing from the box of government revenue so this box this blue box only contains some part of the loss in consumer surplus and some part of the loss in producer surplus but some part of it specifically these two small shaded parts like this part and this part like these two parts are lost right so this is the government revenue this box this blue box is the government revenue and the the yellow part is obviously the loss in consumer surplus the teal part is the loss in producer surplus so whatever is inside the box is regained this whole area is regained since well even though the consumers lose this area even though the producers lose this area the government gains it and so there is no net loss the net loss on this area the net loss on this area is zero like within this box but since two shared parts are outflowing or overflowing from this uh, box we end up with excess loss and so i'm just going to shade this part too so this whole part this triangular part which is out of the box of the government revenue this represents dead weight loss this is dead weight dead weight loss because this is not gained by anyone in society and so it's a net loss as we discussed within the box the net loss is zero but outside of the box the there is a loss in welfare right and so this is the dead weight loss which is not gained by anyone which incorporates well both um in that taxes consumer surplus producer surplus and then it gives rise to this new sort of topic called dead weight loss which can be presented on the diagram like this which is a bit complicated but it does make sense 